Mm. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages? Welcome to season 11 of Red Arrow TV. It's hard to believe we've been doing this for 11 years, or as my brothers to the south would say, "Once años." In Italy, "Undici." In Bangkok, they'd say "Sip it," as the French would say. I don't care what the French say. So while Red Arrow is building its own history, we've been invited on this hunt by someone in the industry who has a far deeper, richer history than us, and that's Real Tree Outdoors. You know, I've watched David Blanton on Monster Bucks and Michael Waddell and Bill Jordan and everybody since I was a kid, man. That's what made me want to get into this hunting industry. So when I got a call from David Blanton to go to the historic 7J Outfitters, I absolutely jumped at the opportunity, but I had to kind of act like I was playing it cool. I was like, oh yeah, hey David. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, if you need another guy. Yeah, no, that, that sounds great. Yeah, around the first week of September. Yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can make it. I'll, okay, yeah, take, I love you too. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Okay, all right, we'll hang up at the same time. One, one, two, three. Ah, you're still on there. Anyway, it went something like that. You know, I don't know a whole lot about the state of Wyoming. In fact, I know about as much as a Tide Pod eating teenager knows about the Second Amendment. But I did look up some interesting facts. You can't take pictures of rabbits from January to April without a permit. If you don't close the gate behind you, you can be fined up to $750. Also in Wyoming, you can't use a firearm to go fishing. It was my weekend. And it's the first state women can vote in. I suppose next you'll be letting them out of the kitchen. And my favorite thing about Wyoming is they have a law prohibiting fat people from getting on playground equipment. I can say it now. Step away from the teeter-totter, fatty. I will tase you. That's right. Go on down the road and get you a biscuit at McDonald's. Well, I'm mean as gravel. I'm old as dirt. And I like things better the way they work. I spend too much money to have a little fun. Come on. I ain't changing, I'm a stubborn man. So can you love me? Now everywhere we go on Red Air TV, we drive the old Ram 2500. Mostly because I don't really like planes, I do fly, but I'm kind of like Mr. T when it comes to planes. I pity the fool who tried to get me on a plane. It is hunting season once again. We're leaving the house, barking on our westward journey out to Wyoming to meet up with the boys from Real Tree and some of the guys from Duck Dynasty. This is the kickoff trip for the year. I think this is the least prepared I've ever been to go on a hunt, but this is also the most excited that I've ever been to get on the road and go hunting. It starts to be around August, you start getting that itch, you gotta get back out on the road, so here we go. We're heading to Wyoming. Well, me and my cameraman, Cheese Whiz, roll up into 7J. We're really excited to be here. You have absolutely no idea what this means to me, and I'm not even kidding. I, I grew up watching people like David kill big bucks at 7J, and it just looks like a really good time. So I was super pumped about this week at 7J. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. Kip Campbell, good to meet you, Jeff. Kip? Yes, sir. Craig Fitz. Craig, how you doing? Nice to meet you. We got there early so we could relax and chill and have a day just to shoot our bows, get settled into camp, and hang out. We're out here on the range, doing last minute dialing in. I set this hoard up before I left. I only got to shoot it a couple times, so I had to get my spot hog dial set up. Martin and Godwin, and everybody shot the bows today. The hoard's dialed in. We got to, got to walk on archery block back there. So I can shoot at 60, shoot the last couple of areas. I think a broken arrow there, I better stop. <laughs> With my Hoyt in my hand, 
I have such confidence. I am so excited about this hunt. I might as well have a 40 millimeter grenade launcher. These deer are in trouble, son. So the first morning hunt, we saw a few deer, had some deer come by early on, nothing too spectacular. But then we moved to a water hole where David had actually hung a Spartan trail camera. And at this water hole, they've been getting a real nice buck on camera. He's coming to this water hole pretty regular. So we're hoping to get a crack at him. And there's a bunch of other good bucks around that area. We're out here at Seven Day Outfitters. It is the first day, first evening, sitting on a little water tank today. It's real hot and dry, these bucks. We've got three bucks that we know of on trail camera coming in here to this water tank. Super windy today, as you can tell, but I got about a 26 yard shot right to this water tank. We saw a bunch of deer already on their feet, even as hot as it is, so hopefully they'll come get them a drink at this water tank. But we're gonna settle in, get our windbreakers on, and see if we can't shoot a deer. We saw a few deer that evening. Most of the bucks stayed outside of 75 yards, at least the, the decent sized bucks. And then we were right back in that same stand the next morning. When the wind dies out, it's kind of swirly. It's just drifting down, that ain't good. I mean, it's steady wind to pick back up. That's, that's terrible right there. It's going right at the water tank. Well, we've had a little problem with the wind this morning. It's second day. 7J Outfitters. One of the big deer that we've got on trail camera is out there. He's full velvet deer. For whatever reason, some of the deer are going over that next mountain instead of coming into here. We need them to come up over this little saddle like these couple does have come through here. If we can just get a buck to do that, that'd be perfect. Even though our land's a little screwy, if, as long as we jump the fence somewhere right in here and stay on this side, we'll be okay. But there's three There's three good bucks in here that we know of, and who knows how many more. But we're gonna sit tight and just see if we can get one of them walk past and get them a little drink out of this water hole. Deer started moving early and immediately we noticed this one shooter buck that if he came in, we were definitely shooting him. The deer never really came in close enough to get a shot and as the morning winded down, there was a doe hanging out at the water tank just a little too long. She turned left the tank and came and gave me a broadside 20 yard shot, just like I like it. I can't take too much of that. I would have flicked her broad head right in the pocket, son. She didn't go out of sight. I absolutely smoked her. And silently put some meat in the freezer. Silently. The deer that were with her. The oh, hoyt was so quiet. The deer that were with her are still there. Well, I don't know if we got, if we're gonna kill the biggest thing of the week. In fact, I know we're probably not, but we definitely killed the first thing of the week. Nothing wrong with putting a little dough meat in the freezer, man. Me and Cheese went out and we were seeing a bunch of deer and seeing some good bucks, but I just couldn't help but go buy a dough tag. Gotta make sure David Bland doesn't lose weight while he's here. We gotta make sure he eats good. I think Martin was actually offered, he's offered to cook this deer, so. Said if we would shoot one, he'd cook it, so I'm gonna hold him to it. I have a philosophy that anytime you are killing, it is good luck. People say, oh man, you messed up that stand. I ain't messed nothing up. Bows are quiet. She died silently. We drug her out. End of story. So now I've got the, the backstrap Hoyt shooting mojo just flowing through me from this doe. And now I'm ready to kill a buck or some more does. I went that day and bought another doe tag. <laughs>
Well, I'm back out here at the water hole stand. It's the second day of 7J Outfitters. I just can't believe the amount of deer we're seeing. And probably only 1% of them or less are coming to this water tank. I just don't get it. We haven't had very many deer at all at this water tank, but we've got a pretty decent wind for the night, so hopefully we see some deer coming to get a drink. I know they're thirsty, it's 80, 80 degrees. I'm thirsty. seen a lot of deer moving through the area and we knew that this big old double kicker buck was coming into that water hole and sure enough right at the edge of dark him and another doe jumped the fence and get him a drink The problem is this doe has seen some stuff go down at this stand at some point because she is really alert and you've got two guys up in the tree stand and my cameraman Brett, right when this doe is looking up our way, reaches forward, he didn't see her, turned on the Tacticam to get footage. When he did that, the doe just bolts and the buck doesn't ask any questions. He just takes off after. I was sick, man. You get a, a opportunity to buck like that on the second day of a hunt, I was about to puke. <laughs> well, day three rolls around and my main man, Godwin, is out hunting this buck that they'd seen the day before called Pie Face. Now this deer is an absolute stud, and here he comes. It looks like he's gonna give Godwin a shot. There he comes, that's him, that's him, that's him. Man, golly, I shot him. This deer came in so fast, we've all been there, man. You get in a hurry, and it looks like God just shot right under this deer, man. That had to be a heartbreaker right there. Good grief. That's the one I was after. We got on him just right. I shot under him. We saw enough good deer at that water hole that we figured we were gonna grind it out. Hopefully the sticker buck doesn't know what really happened. He'll come back. We figured like that was the place to be. We saw a few deer that evening, but this one doe in particular comes in, circles around behind us, starts to get in our wind, and my policy, no tolerance. So if she's about to bust us, I'm taking her out. Now this deer's at 45, 50 yards, and I draw back on her, rest my pin, feeling good about the shot. I touch off, and she takes a step and then turns her whole body. So I went from rib cage looking like a 10 ring shot to right up the old bee hole. Most people wouldn't even show this shot on Outdoor Channel, but it was a very lethal shot. The deer died in like 30 seconds and didn't go probably 50 yards. It went from the tutor to the rooter, it came all the way out her neck right here with that a flicker broadhead cutting that one and three quarter cut. Right there. Hey, 
Look, let me tell you something. This is real bow hunting. Weird things happen sometimes. Not everything works out like an archery tournament 3D shoot. My fault, should have waited, paused a little bit and let her take that full step, but let the arrow go. She took a full step and turned. Ended up hitting her in the back quarter, but the length of the arrow shaft drove right up through her. I was perfect on my up and down. I'd have heart shot her if she had stayed there, or at least double lunged her. But um, there she lays right there. She didn't go probably less than 50 yards from where I, where I shot her. Well, that's doe number two. We had a doe screw up a hunt for us last night really bad. I had a doe tag in my pocket this morning and there are so many does, it's ridiculous. Definitely a need to take out a few does for the buck doe ratio around here. And um, we're proud to put some meat in the freezer. But that's cool, man. It went from being like, oh man, that shot didn't hit where I wanted it to, to she didn't go. I mean, dang, she didn't go 40 yards probably. That's cool, man. I'm gonna drag her out of here. Now me and this next guy became fast friends at camp. Justin Martin is a hunting fool. You guys have seen him on the Duck Dynasty show. He is a duck commander. He's also a buck commander, it turns out. Maybe not officially, but the boy can shoot a bow and arrow and he loves to deer hunt. Morning four, seven J Wyoming, as you can tell. It has, uh, it's a little breezy this morning on top of this hill. Um, I kind of feel like I'm in three to four footers out in the Gulf, but we'll, we'll manage. We're hunting a stand we've been wanting to hunt all week. Finally got the wind right for it, so hopefully us staying away from it will pay off. I don't know. Uh, starting to get a little more dialed in. Goblin missed his last night. That's that's a bummer, but hey, at least he's in the chip. He's in the game. That's all you never ask for with this man. They're seeing some good bucks, and all of a sudden it happens quick, but here comes a good shooter buck right to his stand. Hey, 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 hey. Little buck behind us. Gotta come right behind us. That hammer, it getting it, it getting it going down in that canyon, son. Ooh. Oh, that escalated quickly. I'm freezing to death, and I'm nervous. I don't know what I'm shaking for the most. I'm pretty sure the Wyoming tag is punched. We're back, baby. You know, this was a good old ten pointer, especially for Wyoming. This was a solid buck. And it may be the biggest deer that Martin's killed with a bow and arrow. It had done gotten ripe in there. Look at that sucker there. I tell you what, we waited four days to get in here and hunt this stand with a stupid wind. And look what happened. He's like me, old, he's the old Louisiana redneck, just like I'm a Virginia redneck. And we like killing stuff, son. I mean, this was a really good buck. So that brings the backstrap tally, I think, in camp to six backstraps. It's almost time to have a cookout, baby. That's the heck of a man. Uh, Ain't that good? Watch him, man. That's a good one, bro. We're not done by any means. We're coming back next week. We killed so many deer, we just couldn't fit them all into this one episode. We're going to stack up the back straps. We're going to eat good. We're going to have a good time. And maybe, spoiler alert, at the end of the show, I'll finally get a crack at this giant, legendary Wyoming buck that we've been chasing, and the guides there have been chasing him for two years. Get you some Wyoming. What do we do, Cheese? Y'all don't forget to go in our online store and represent with some Red Arrow swag. Let everybody know you like to kill things and you're unapologetic about it because it is the way God intended it to be. Putting meat in the freezer. We'll see you in Wyoming next week, man. Love y'all.